the Simba Corp Aspire Center. This is where we are having the discussion on how safe is your child in school. It's been a week since there was an incident at the Nairobi school and also a week to the deadline that the CS gave for a task force to give a report on that allegations of bullying and assault that led to brain surgery. Research shows that more than half of pupils are bullied in schools. I have my panelists here and an audience. Let's just take a quick pulse and start by asking them, how many of you here were bullied in schools by a show of hands? All right. Almost the entire hall. Let me introduce my guest to you right now. You can dive into the discussion as well. Use the hashtag Monday Report. You can tweet at Trevor Mbija at Wega Moura. I'll try to sample some of your views during this broadcast, but let me start by introducing my guest. It's beginning from my immediate left, Professor David Nete from the University of Nairobi School of Psychiatry. Sante Sana for coming through. We also have Dr. Charity Waitima clinical psychologist, head of department counseling and psychology at the African Nazarene University. And last but not least, we have Mr. Indimuli Kahi. He's the chairperson, Kenya Secondary School Heads Association. He'll be telling us whether the school heads have let down the parents and the students. But I want to start in a different form today, and I'll speak to Meshak Mwaura. He's the former head of school at the Nairobi School, what most of us call head boy or captain. Meshak, that was between 2015 and 2016. While you were there, was there bullying in that school? Well, um, bullying is re re retrospective, right? And uh, yeah, we can say there was bullying, but uh, it was in a different form, where you're told uh, probably uh, you bring in a boy, and at the end of the day you get a man at the end of the four-year course. Right? So they were saying they're turning you from a boy to a man. It's not said. Yeah, it's, it's uh, done. Yeah, it's not really said or done. It's, uh, it's the philosophy that's there, right? Okay. Yes. So, but did they report this to the school administration? What was the response? You are the school head, the school yes. captain. Yes. Did they come to you? Yes. Uh, in most cases, they do come to the school captain, right? But there are measures put in place whereby like junior prefects are supposed to handle the situation. So in most cases, you don't find the cases get, getting to the administration or to the senior prefects. Okay. Yes. But what happens when it's the prefects themselves who are bullying those students? Well, in that case, uh, the administration ought to know, but you find in some cases, it doesn't really get to the administration, right? So the students just end up languishing, right? Uh, in silence. Um, yeah, so the, the case doesn't really get to the administration. Was it ever encouraged for that particular situation to get to the administration? Were the students encouraged to get to speak what's really happening to them? Yes. All right. Yes. All right, and I want to take another contrary view here. This is coming from a different person. He says, he was bullied by the school prefects themselves. Let's start with your name and what really happened. Kindly stand. Uh, my name is Lewis Gidaiga. Uh, I'm a Kenyatta University student. So what I understand about bullying, it is done by the captains themselves. The school captain, they yeah. have the authority. Yeah. They will misuse the authority. Maybe it's a dorm prefect. He's in charge of uh, duties. Maybe you don't perform your duty to performance and they end up taking the authority to their hands, they will slap you, you they will beat you. I remember to some point, there's a captain who ended up slapping a student until the student was bled. So there's, and when you go to the authority, they don't understand. They trust the captains too much to an extent. No one believes you. The captain will go and report that you didn't do the duty, but will deny he did anything. So the school authority does not understand the captains themselves are part of this bullying. All right. Yeah. Professor, you've done a lot of research on this center. What were the most perplexing findings for you during your research time? Well, <clears throat> the most um, interesting finding was, um, was the, the, uh, the frequency or the prevalence of bullying in schools. And just to give the background, uh, that time when we did this study and we were collecting the data 2003, yeah. um, uh, but it didn't find uh, its way to scientific journal until 2007. It takes a long process to do research and get it published. Um, we looked at 17 schools, public schools in Nairobi, uh, out of the then 49 uh, schools. And uh, we found very high prevalence of uh, bullying. 
uh, between 60 and 80 percent. And we were very, very surprised that it was that very, very high. Yeah. Um, of course, bullying occurs in schools all over the world. But the bullying that we saw in this country was close to four times that happens in schools in other, in Western settings. So this was a very surprising finding. From the findings, what was the reasons for this? What was what? What was the reasons for the bullying? What, what was inspiring this bullying? Well, the, when we did the study, we, we were limited by resources, but uh, we, we were focused. We just wanted to know whether there was a problem. Yeah. And we established that there was a problem. We were able to determine the environmental factors within the school that contribute to the bullying. But we didn't have the time to talk to the, to the parents and to talk to the teachers. Of course, um, when we went to those schools, we got their permission. We had, of course, we had to get permission from the relevant authorities for you to do research. But some of the schools told us, don't waste your time coming here, there's no bullying. Of course, we'd go through the head teachers. Yeah. Don't, don't waste your time. Uh, one school told us, don't waste your time. You are not going to find anything. Okay. And uh, when we went back to them and told them, this is what we found, they said, no, no, it's not possible. And of course, we told them, it's science. You can't argue with the science. This is yeah. how we did it, and this is what we found. Um, yeah. Take it or leave it. So there was denial. Indimuli, in you are the chairperson of the Kenya School Heads Association. You've been a head teacher yourself. Are the head teachers burying, simply burying their heads in the sand? Not really. Uh, first, I would want to start with your initial question. You did ask the audience how many were bullied, and almost everybody put their hand up. Yeah. But you should have followed up with another question. How many amongst them were bullies? We are going to get into that in the next session. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, the issue of, uh, of bullying takes different forms. And uh, at times, it does not get to the principal or the teachers. So at times, um, we get to hear of this just after there is an, an incident. That's when you learn that this was going on, because the students themselves will be quiet. The student leaders themselves will not share it with the administration, maybe because they are part of the problem and they have threatened others, you see. So it becomes very difficult for the school administrators to come out openly and say, yes, this is going on, because we do not get the information as quickly as these things happen. Sometimes we we get to learn maybe there was an incident and action is taken. Isn't that then a breakdown between the school administration and the students who are undertaken to be under your care and you then letting down the parents? Because when the parents send their students to you, they expect you to be in touch with their students. We are in touch with the students. But you don't know that bullying is happening. We are in touch with the students. And we are looking at a situation where these students too have their leaders. And through their leadership, they must share this information. And quite often, uh, we do hold uh, discussions with the student leaders. We do ask those who have been visited with uh, uh, bullying to come up openly and report cases. Yeah. And in many cases where principals have found reason that this has happened, we have taken action on them. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Waidima, why does this happen in school from the psych psychiatry perspective and being a practicing psychologist? Why is this so rampant? I think it's rampant because of various reasons. Yeah. You know that uh, healed people heal others, but hurting people hurt others. And therefore, you will find that in schools, bullying sometimes can be a power game. Like we've had one of the people say they were bullied by prefects. And so it is a power game. They want to assert their power to somebody who is under them. And sometimes even teachers can bully the students. And 
why this happens many times in school is because of that. And sometimes you will find that uh, society has contributed to this. We have bullies in our environment. Sometimes there may be parents, there may be politicians, there may be leaders in their own respect. And therefore, the young people have also been modeled. Other issues may be psychological. You'll find that some bullies, they have a lot of fears within themselves. And for them to assert themselves to others so that they don't look weak, they would want to bully other people. And so there are various factors that lead to bullying. Mm -hmm. Others, they were bullied while younger, and therefore, especially when they, they get to school, now they would want to bully others. It's like a revenge mission they are in. So very many reasons contribute to this. Okay. And sometimes, you know, somebody may be, you know, physically big, but probably in school they are not uh, cognitively endowed, and so they're not performing as well as these other guys. And which way can I show these others that I'm, I'm also important? Yeah. Then you'll find that they, they may go into bullying. So from the psychology perspective, is this a breakdown in the school administration? or parental guidance? Because there are those who are saying bullying begins right at home. I think it's a breakdown in society. We cannot pin it down to the parents only or to the teachers only. However, from home, especially children who come from families that are violent or where domestic violence is uh, meted on one of the parents, that can contribute to it. In school also, when the teachers learn to bully children, it can also happen. However, if society, both parents, the teachers, and the entire society, if we were able to model respect for other people, I think that is one way we can model people when they, I mean children when they go to school from bullying. Okay. Yeah, All so right. we, we cannot sort of pin it to parents or to the teachers. Yeah. It's a societal issue. Okay. Yeah. In Muli, do we have structures of dealing with this in schools? Have the head teachers come up with the guidelines that they know this is what happens when bullying occurs, this is what you do from step one, step two, step three? Yes. All schools have guidelines uh, on how student conduct should be uh, and how reporting should actually occur. And they also have structures that will explain uh, any action that you take. What are the consequences? So these are there. And I want to just pick up from Daktari where she says the issue of uh, uh, bullying is just uh, power. When we look at uh, the prefects, past studies that um, we were talking about school unrest, one finding was uh, the appointment of prefects, where it was felt that the administration was appointing prefects who are not really welcome by the other students. The resolution to that was students should be given an opportunity to elect their own leaders. So today, the leaders that we have in school are elected after vetting by their colleagues. Now, if these colleagues have elected them, now why do they again turn against their colleagues? Yeah. It's simply power. When somebody is in a position of responsibility, he would like everybody else to realize that they are in that position and therefore they should be able to, uh, to be listened to or whatever instruction they give should be followed. But once we get information as school heads, we've taken action. At Kenya Secondary School Heads Association, having realized that uh, the, the, the leaders elected may be having shortfalls, what we've done every year we've been organizing a student leaders conference where we bring together uh, leaders from all over the country, 30 leaders from each county, and those that are large, we take more, yeah. and we bring them for a one-week conference where they are taken through issues of leadership and how to handle yeah. challenges that come with the leadership okay. and their own performance. All right. Yes, the bullies that we do have uh, as uh, Daktari has said, some are not well endowed academically. Yeah. And therefore, uh, to assert themselves 
to those who are more brighter, they would want to, uh, uh, to use means that are not acceptable okay. in school. All right. This would happen. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes when it happens, the, those visited with the bullying would be quiet. And I'm sure if you took a statistics here, they'll tell you how quiet they were uh, when this happened to them. But there are open channels in schools. Principals at the moment are operating under very strict regulations. Okay. For example, uh, we have an education act in which we have to, to operate through. We have the, the Children's Act, which we operate through, and they have limitations, okay. even how disciplinary action can be should taken. be taken right. against the would-be bullies. Okay. Yeah. I'll come to Prof to, give us, to tell us whether those interventions actually worked, but let's get a view from the audience here. Start with your name, sir, and with the, your comment and a question, and kindly stand, and also tell us whether you yourself was a bully. Uh, my name is uh, Shadrach Kimutai. Well, um, I'd like first of all to say that uh, our institutions particularly, they have been a bit rigged because uh, the prefects who are visually selected, let me talk about high school for example. I was once bullied by uh, a captain in school and until to date that particular event actually hurt me in person. But the question is to me, in that education act, is there anywhere that it says that a prefect can actually discipline his fellow student? Is it possible? How can you give a fellow teenager the power to discipline another? And yet, he himself might also be at the wrong side uh, of this particular case, okay? All right. So, uh, in that particular act, this these prefects who are actually uh, hitting our fellow students, they should actually be even in, in most cases been taken even to courts if it's possible. Okay. All right. In the Muli, is there anywhere where a captain the is allowed? The Education Act yes. does not allow any prefect, any teacher to humanely handle a student. If I as a teacher am not even allowed to, to cane or punish a student in a humane manner, then the prefects all the student leaders have no such rights. And that is why we are saying, when the leaders act in that manner, information must be given and given immediately. Okay. So that we, we, we stand accused when we are given the information and we don't act on it. That one, if I take myself as an example, we have acted, I have acted on cases where uh, we've received information yeah. of a student, not only a prefect, any other student bullying another one. Okay. So the Education Act has not given leeway to yeah. anybody, whether a teacher or a student, okay. to bully or punish a st another person in any humane manner. Wait, all right. just, just a point of clarification. Did you report that incident? Uh, yes, I actually reported that incident, okay. but there's always something called a cover-up, right? And uh, nothing happened, actually. Nothing, nothing happened. Okay. There's only one person I'd like to uh, actually... Uh, Don't mention names. Yeah, I'm mean, not mentioning names. Is a person known as a bell ringer. The bell ringer, is, I have most respect for that particular person. And uh, for other uh, prefects outside there, please stop bullying Kenyans. All right. The students, actually. Let's take another question here. I see there's a lot closest here. Start, start with your name and then give us your experience. Thank you. My name is Cheng Oguda. I have a vast experience as a, a bullied person who again became a bully. I bullied. So my, my story is that uh, I, I reported late to school and uh, the bullying was like quenching down. Then I came a new person who was now to receive the full, like the final of the bullies. So they called me and um, asked me what was in the calling letter, I enumerated, and then they pointed at some part of my body and asked if that was also in the calling letter, why have I come with it, things like that. So when I could not answer, I was really beaten. I, I couldn't even eat that night, so I stored my sokotas, the githeri, which had a lot of bean soup in, the, in, in my box, and they came and shook 
the whole of it so that the whole soup of the beans mixed with my clothes, with my white clothes and sheets and everything. I went to the teacher and reported, who happened to be the deputy principal of the school. And uh, with my village broken English, I could not sustain that report because that guy had vocabularies to talk about. So this guy just laughed at me and said, Kijana, this is normal. So, why so I, I, I suspect that, or I, my, my point is that teachers also really do encourage bullying. Why did you become a bully yourself? You said you became a bully. I became a bully, a bully because it, when I was being bullied, everybody else were laughing. Like it was now like a party. So it was like a fun. So when I went to Form 2, when I had, I was given, after being bullied, I was given somebody to be sent to, somebody who, to whom I was to wash clothes every day, wash dishes, serve food, brush the shoes every day. So when I got to Form 2, I, I also got a son. You picked a servant of your uh, own. Yes, okay. I also picked a servant, so I was like, it was like a revenge, like, like the doctor was saying, it okay. was like a revenge. So by the end of, by, 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 by that it became like a fun and okay. it was so normalized right. like it was very normal to do that okay and the teachers like really approved it all right yes professor do these intervention measures actually work from the research that you've done yeah uh, um just a word of caution i think we must be extremely careful uh, to in putting blame on particular people or on the students uh, i don't think any students want to bully and nobody wants to be bullied. Um, when we did that research, there were some schools that were extremely notorious. Probably they continue to be notorious. I can't name those schools for ethical reasons. Yeah. But I think I can say there was one school where we hardly found any bullying, and that was Tare Boys School. Uh, of all the schools, 17 schools that we looked. So there are school environments that in, uh, influence uh, bullying or have an effect on, uh, on bullying or the prevalence of bullying. Yeah. So I think the best thing, instead of saying students that you are, you are bullied and then you also became a bully, um, it's not going to take us anywhere. Okay. Is it possible for us to find out what are the social factors within the school, within the individual students who are bullied, those who bully, within the school and environment, and equally important, and please listen to me, the families from which these children come from. I think that's what she was trying to say. Yeah. All of these have an influence. And uh, if we don't take that holistic approach, I'm telling you we'll keep on going on in circles and circles. We've been talking about bullying since the last 20 years, yeah. and, and we are still talking about it, and it's still happening. So whatever we may have put in place does not seem to be working. Where have we gone wrong as a society? That is where we start to, that's where we start to, need to start asking questions. All right, and I have to take a quick break now. When we come back on the Monday report, the main concern we're going to deal with right now is solutions. Professor says what we've put in place doesn't work. So what do we need to do? Use the hashtag Monday report. I see a lot of your feedback. I'll try and read a few of them really fast. Felix Njika says all the students should be their brothers and sisters keepers and embrace oneness. Jimmy Prince says our society should encourage and teach all the youth and teenagers good morals. Churches should also play a big role to bring youth together and guide them on their social life. Lastly, our dear parents to take that full responsibility to monitor their children's behavior. We have Job who says, as long as power is bestowed on leaders, bullying won't stop. It is the duty of student leaders to represent their peers to the administration, not to rule over them. That power should be withdrawn. And Kipkemoi Chumba says, we can only stop this act by having teachers who are responsible. Only in our current society, where morals of our children has eroded so as their seniors that is parents and teachers let us wake up and do our roles at an individual level keep your views coming on the monday report as the hashtag trevor mbija to a moral sample some of them when we come back now we are looking at solutions what we have in place isn't working we're still talking about bullying several years later we're back in just a bit